In this video, we're going to take a look at the basic options in WordFence Security. First setting available to you in basic options is to enable or disable the firewall. Of course, this is going to be on automatically. We strongly recommend that you leave it on because it's a great way of making sure your site's going to be very difficult to attack and take down. And of course, you can tweak this uh, in, a, in a lot more detail later on. The second option is to enable login security. Again, it's something we definitely recommend you leave on, and we'll get to those settings a little bit later because you can configure it quite a bit. Next, you can choose to enable or disable the live traffic view. This just basically enables the live traffic logging that we've covered in a previous video where you can see where all the hits to your website are coming from and some details about them. In the interest of keeping track of what's going on and where it's coming from, we'd probably recommend leaving this on. Of course, if you don't really find that you're using it, it could be okay to turn it off, but in the instance that you do get attacked, it's pretty handy to have that data available so that you can effectively take measures against those attackers. The next three features are indeed all premium features, so you will need to actually be a paying customer of WordFence to use them. They are the advanced comment spam filter, which can help protect your website against a list of known spammers and protected hosts, which can help prevent spam comments coming in from known spammers and infected hosts. Then you can also choose to enable the spamvertised protection, which when you do a scan, WordPress will actually check with certain spam services if your domain name's appearing as a link in spam emails and so on. And then you can also turn on the feature that will check if your particular website's IP is generating spam. This is actually a super cool feature. And if you think that it might be happening, it could be worth paying just for that feature alone. Next, we come down to enabling auto scheduled scans. It's turned on by default, definitely leave it on so the plugin will routinely check to make sure that your site is not compromised and in good shape. Of course, if you need more control over this, there is that paid addition of being able to schedule the scans yourself at a time that suits you. Then you can choose to keep the plugin updated automatically. This will be a very individual option. If you're pretty happy with the plugin and happy for it to be updated just automatically in the background and you don't have to think about it, turn it on. However, if you're more particular about your plugin management and you will like to check the particular code and the changes that are made to the plugin, don't turn that on. Make sure you check it out first and then you can update manually at a time that suits you. After this, we can choose where email alerts are sent to. So here you would just put in your email address, which you know, could be anything, but we'll just put in example at example.com. Next, you just get to choose the security level. Level two is the default. It's classified as medium protection. And as it says, it's suitable for most sites. Of course, you can change this up or down very, very easily, as you can see here, and even choose custom settings as well, if you'd like to do that. To give you an idea of how you might choose to manage this particular setting, as it says, level two is suitable for most sites, and unless you're noticing any problems in the operation of your website or any problems from users, that's probably gonna be fine for almost forever. Of course, if there are problems, you can change it down to light protection, so it's just taking care of some basic functionality there in terms of protecting your site. And if your site's under attack, you can log in and put it up on level four on lockdown. The final setting is how WordFence gets IPs. As it says, set this option if you're seeing visitors from fake IP addresses who appear to be from your internal network, but aren't. So there's a few options you can choose from here. The first is to use PHP's built-in remote address. This should be your first port of call and will be what most people use if they choose to use this function because it's for non-NGINX servers and for those who are not behind a front-end proxy or firewall. There's also a couple of options there if you're using Nginx or a particular proxy. And indeed, there's a setting for the very popular Cloudflare as well. So you can choose those as you see fit. Once you have completed making any changes here, hit save changes to make those go through. That's all we're gonna cover in this particular video, the basic options in WordFence security. If you have any questions about what we've done, please feel free to ask in the comments below.